uh, Dave Spensky, and uh, just to kind of set the stage here, I, I'm not a solar contractor. Uh, I don't sell panels or inverters, and uh, I'm not an environmental activist of any kind. I, I'm just a local geek. I actually live a couple of blocks down there, and I stumbled across solar power, and I, I think it's really cool. And, and I, so I'm just trying to really promote it in my town, and it's actually turned out to be quite a ride. It's been quite fun. So my goal tonight, and um, I want you to take this seriously. I want everyone in this room to seriously think about putting solar panels on your house in Ypsilanti. Okay, that's the goal. And I'm going to convince you of doing this because, one, it's easy. Uh, two, it's actually economical. Three, I'm going to give a little story about economics of scale. And uh, four, as uh, Mary just mentioned, uh, it's really good for your town. I mean, we got more people now talking about Ipsy on a whole different topic, and so it's just, it's just great PR for your town. All right, let's start off with uh, the solar panels. Uh, here's a small one. That's what a typical one looks like. It's, it's about this high, this wide. There, there's uh, dozens of different kinds of types there are. There are mono, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, amorphous. There's this new stuff out there called nano solar. Uh, some of them are made out of organic material. Some are actually different colors. Uh, but the ones we've been using around town are, are mono or polycrystalline. They look like that. Uh, about 50 pounds. Easy enough for someone to carry up a ladder. Um, and uh, yeah, the interesting thing about them is uh, uh, the interesting thing about them is is the technology has been growing. So when we first started in 2005, the typical panel was uh, like 190 watts. And now they're about 250 watts. So the same panel, same size, has gotten a lot more efficient. But the more important thing is, is that the, uh, the panel back then would cost about $5 per watt. So that panel would be like $1,000. In the last couple of years, it's gone down to $1 per watt. So this panel is now $200 to $300. So it's come down dramat uh, dramatically in price. All right, so here's, here, let's, here's a typical installation. Uh, yeah, we got some panels on the roof. We got an inverter, which is that big red box. We got some appliances, and we have the, um, the utility meter. So the first thing I want to explain, <laughs> this is my yellow duct tape sun that I've been carrying around for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and same with this panel now that I think about it. Um, high school uh, physics, I think this would be. Uh, to get the most power out of your panel, you want the sun to hit the panel perpendicular. That's perpendicular. That's not perpendicular. And so in, in, um, to, to put solar panels on your house and you want to uh, point them to get the most sun, to get the most energy, uh, you want to put it at your latitude. I'm going to turn it sideways like this. And so you want this angle down here to be your latitude. So in here in Ypsilanti, we're at 42 degrees north. And so that means if I put this panel at 42 degrees north in Ypsilanti, on the equinox at noon, the sun will be exactly perpendicular to my panel. If I uh, go in the dead of winter, because of the tilt of our Earth axis, you'll be 23 and a half degrees too low. And if I do in the height of summer, I'll be 23 and a half degrees too high. But by putting it on your, your, uh, your latitude, you get you know, um, an average of both and you get the most power. Now, the other thing you gotta realize is right, the sun is rising and the sun is setting. Uh, so you can track them if you wanted to. But typically, we just uh, put them at 42. Actually, we tip them down a little bit because we wanna tune them for sunshine uh, for the summertime when you get more sun. All right, the next thing is this inverter. The inverter is, is what I like to call uh, the magic box. <laughs> Does everybody know what direct current and alternating current is? Direct current is what's in a flashlight. So when I turn on my flashlight, all the electrons flow out of the battery through the light bulb and come back. Uh, the typical power outlet in your house is alternating current. So all those electrons are going to kind of jiggle back and forth 60 times a second. So the inverter, this magic box, the EMF doesn't know anything other than it's the magic box. Uh, takes the direct current from your solar panels and listens to the power that's connected to the house and makes the power, uh, match, makes alternating current that exactly matches the power in your house. So th there's a lot of rocket science going on in that box, but for the typical homeowner, you buy the box, you, you hang it on the wall, you plug two wires from your panels on the one side and you plug two wires on, your, on the other side and, and you're done. So it, it, it's really no rocket science for, for doing these kind of projects. How does it hook to your house? That's what most people are really puzzled by. You know, this got this solar stuff, it got these panels, got this magic box. Um, this is called a breaker. Everybody's got one of these. 
And if you ever plugged a hair dryer into a, a, light, a light socket, right, and you blew the fuse and the lights went out, you went down to the basement and you would flip the breaker and the lights would come back on. This is a 240 volt, 20 amp breaker. Uh, you could buy this at the local hardware store, about 10 bucks. And if I want to put a stove in my house, I would wire, I would have my stove here and I would put one of these in my breaker panel. That's that middle box there where the guy's getting electrocuted. Um, <laughs> I would put this in my breaker panel and I would wire up my stove and so electricity would flow from the utility company into my breaker panel, out this breaker and to my electric stove and warm up my coffee. If I want to put solar panels on my house, I go back to the hardware store, I buy another 20 amp breaker, exact same one, I plug it into my circuit panel and I plug my inverter into this, into this breaker. So it's the same breaker, the breaker doesn't care if the power is going out to power a stove or in to power my house. So, so that's it. And if you flip the switch, you're going to turn off your solar system. Uh, yeah. Your solar installation, not the whole solar system. <laughs> that would be a bummer. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, everybody clear your minds. Clear your minds. We're going to do a thought experiment. Here's our thought experiment. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. There is no sun because it's 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, and for some reason, you've woken up and you want to do dishes, make margaritas, make some chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> and cook a hamburger. All of that, uh, the, the inverter is solar powered. So at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, the, the inverter is completely shut off. And all of the electricity for those appliances are coming from the utility grid through my little uh, utility meter there and supplying all the power for my uh, appliances. So now it's... Um, now it's like 10 or 11 a.m., right? The sun's just coming up. Remember, you get, you're, you're gonna get your most power here, so I'm gonna get a little bit of power when the sun's like this, when it's rising in the morning. But it's enough, the inverter wakes up, good morning, checks itself out, listens to the power, and then starts making electricity that exactly matches the power in the house. And it's feeding into the same breaker panel that you have in your basement. So now at 10 o'clock, you, maybe you're, for some reason, you're still washing dishes, making margaritas and cookies and cooking hamburgers. But now at 11 o'clock, uh, your dishwasher is solar powered, and your other appliances are utility powered. Okay, so now it's noon, it's a great day, it's sunny, no clouds, there's no snow covering my panels. And this actually happens every day at the food co-op and the bakery. Um, I'm making a ton of power, and I'm making so much power that I've completely solar powerized all my appliances, and I have another electron that comes into the house. And this electron is looking for a ground, and there's no place for it to go. And so what does that electron do? It looks for the next closest place to go to ground, and that's my neighbor's toaster. So it's going to go out backwards through your breaker panel. It's going to go through your utility meter. Your utility meter will literally spin backwards, and it'll go to the power pole and power your neighbor's toaster. So that's how this works. So there's, there's really no, there's no batteries, no rocket science. Uh, you know, once you understand it, it's really quite simple. Okay, now I am a geek. And I could talk for an hour on numbers, but I'm going to save you the power. I'm going to save you the uh, the pain and just go through seven lines. Okay? Here's the math, the uh, return on investment. Line number one: the typical Michigan house burns about 650 kilowatt hours per month. Open up your power bill. That's the number you're going to see. Uh, I, I've made it 600 to make the math easier. I divide it by 30. I, I burn about 20 kilowatt hours per day on average. I want to make myself 100% solar powered. So um, I need to tell you one other thing. The National Renewable Lab is your tax dollars in action. Um, have put panels all through the country, and they say that if I put my panel in Michigan, tipped at my latitude, facing south, I can pretend, even though the sun's moving all over the place, uh, I can pretend that the sun is perpendicular to my panel four hours a day. In Germany, the leaders in solar power, they get three hours of peak sun per day, and in California and southern Arizona, they get six hours per day. Our, we, have, uh, we get a low number because we have great lakes like the talk before us, and we get a lot of clouds. Anyways, I want to be 100% solar powered. I take my 20 kilowatt hours per day, which is actually 20,000 watt hours. I divide by four, so I need 5,000 watts of panels. So that picture I showed you before was 250, so I would need about 20 panels like that on my roof it would be roughly 40 feet by 10 feet. I'm on line three if anybody's lost. Uh, what was that cost? Typical prices, prices that come dramatically down. 
uh, an installer price is about $4 per watt. I'm on line four. Uh, so $4 per times 5,000 watts, that would cost me, you know, the installer would come, do everything, and I probably would write them a check for in a neighborhood of $20,000. Now, your federal uh, tax credit, there's a 30% federal tax credit, will knock off 30% of that. So when you do your taxes at the end of the year, you'll get a check for $6,000. DTE, our local utility company, has a thing called Solar Currents. They'll actually pay you 20 cents per kilowatt hour, for, per, per, per kilowatt installed. So they're going to write you a check for $1,000 at the moment of installation. And they'll actually sign you up for a contract, and they'll pay you 3 cents per kilowatt hour generated for the next, like, 10 years. And that'll be another $2,000. And if there's any business majors in here or finance people, I know I'm blending present day dollars with future day dollars, and that's a sin. But uh, <laughs> trust me, it all works out in the end. <laughs> Line six. Line six. It costs $20,000, you know, install costs. I'm going to get roughly $9,000 back in uh, credits. So it's going to be about $11,000, you know, 10800 uh, of real cost, um, and so that, that's the real cost. And then now, so now, is this a, a positive return on investment? Is this a good thing to do financially? You know, forget the environment. Just think about your pocketbook. Uh, what would that cost if I just bought electricity? So line seven, uh, if I if I spent uh, if I burned 600 kilowatt hours per month, and the typical going rate is 16 cents per kilowatt hour for 12 months, it would cost me about $1,100 per year. If I divide $1,100 into $11,000. That means my return on investment is like nine to 10 years. So in nine to 10 years, I'll have paid off that system. And then the good news is, is these things last 30. So it's like, pull. I want you to think, imagine this. I want you to think of all the future electrical payments you're going to make. I want you to reach out and I want you to grab 10 years worth of money, pull it forward and buy solar. And then you'll be solar powered for the next 30 years. Everybody with me? Was that too hard? All right, here's my funny joke, uh, and i got to make this fast because I'm running out of time. Um, I'm a geek. <laughs> Can you tell? Uh, back in, in uh, 1993, I bought my first computer. It was $2,000. It had 16 megabits of, of RAM. I can't even believe this. <laughs> 50 megahertz. 50 megahertz. <laughs> All right, and then I, I looked, went on Google last night, right? Galaxy phone is like 200 bucks. Fits in my pocket. 32 gigabytes, you know, dual core. So everything is better. So th the bottom line, you know, in the last 20 years, computers have gotten, you know, 10 times cheaper and 50 times, say, better. I want you to buy a solar panel today. And when you buy your solar panel today, I want you to imagine me buying this junky old computer 20 years ago, okay? Because that's what happened. It's a bunch of people like me, and maybe the leading edge geeks, you know, bought these computers, and then the medium edge geeks, you know, bought the next generation, and every time people bought computers, the volumes went up, the prices went down, and every time the prices went down, another community of people says, okay, now I'll jump in. So the panel you buy today is like the computer I bought 20 years ago. And so we need to do it. And it's happening. In, two th in 2009, more silicon went to making solar panels than they did to making computer chips. And I read an article about a month ago saying that um, uh, manufacturing technology from the integrated circuit world is now migrating to the solar panel world. So everything's just getting better. We're at the beginning of the, of the technology curve. And it's great. Uh, and it's great, for your, uh, it's great for your community. I mean, I couldn't believe any of this was going to happen when I started. We've got about a dozen locations in town, maybe another six on the way. There's a possibility of a huge solar farm coming in the town. Google found us somehow and <laughs> made this video. We got a quarter million hits. We got a website that was made by an EMU student when he was a student here. It was amazing. Uh, it's still running today. In fact, he's graduated several years ago, and he still maintains it. Uh, Nick Estep does that. Uh, we've been on radio, TV. We're working on self-guided tours. And now for the finale, you all have a homework assignment. <laughs> this is your house. <laughs> and if your house doesn't look like this, think about your house. Um, think about the biggest like, surfaces on your roofs. Okay, and I need you to decide, I'm, I'm serious, I want everybody to really think about where you live right now. And I want you to think about where your house is situated relative to south. So in this situation, I have an east roof, I'm going to assume that's south. Uh, I have an east roof and a west roof. And in this situation, I have a south roof and a north roof. Okay, if you have a south roof 
and you own the house, I want you to call a solar contractor and get a quote. Just get a quote, get two or three quotes, and just see what it costs. And if you can't afford the whole, be 100% solar powered, be 50% solar powered, all right? And if you don't own the house, um, you know, talk to your landlord or find a neighbor that has a house like that. <laughs> or a church or a club or whatever. But this is the thing. Let's get a thousand roofs in little old Ypsilanti and let's put Ypsilanti on the map as a solar destination. Thank you. Thank you.